Okay, my friends, welcome to this video. And I received from a very generous man in Texas, a place called Big, Big Spring, the entire collection of the American Chess Quarterly magazine. This was published between 1961 and 1965. And entire collections are not only super rare, they are super expensive. And this man very generously sent me this entire collection. And I'm going to share one or two of the games from it. It's a wonderful publication if you have ever seen it. It contains articles, original articles by American chess legends like Robert James Fisher and William Lombardi, who of course was Fisher's second in the 1972 World Championship match in Reykjavik in Iceland. Well here William Lombardi is facing the Rosalimo variation of the Sicilian defence. And he plays here Queen to b6. And he says this move suited my mood at the time. It's a solid continuation with little or no risk. We had queen to e2, e6, double zeros, knight f6. The knight gets hit here by the pawn coming to e5. Steed goes to d5. Gets hit again with the pawn coming to c4. And here there were considered a continuation by uh, Max Uwe, in which he suggested knight to f4, queen e4, knight g6, and h4 with a better game for white. Instead of that, uh, William Lombardi chose knight to c7. And he writes that this move spoils White's plans because either he will be forced to give up the bishop or he must waste time rotating the bishop. So in the game, White actually took on c6. And Grandmaster Lombardi captured with the queen. Knight to c3, b6, preparing to bring the bishop to the long diagonal. Knight e4, bishop b7, d3, and the wonderful break in the centre with d5. Grandmaster Lombardi writes that White had not anticipated this move, which adds potency to the black bishop pair. For one way or another, the position will open up. Well, we had e takes d6 en passant, bishop takes d6, and knight f to g5. And as you can see, the position has opened up. William Lombardi actually gives this move here, knight g5, an exclaim. And he says that this is White's best chance, because he needs to stir up some act of counterplay in order to compensate for his backward queen pawn and to neutralise black's two powerful bishops. And if we look at these bishops, they are super powerful. So, yeah, white's got to do something here on the king's side to compensate for these uh, weaknesses. Well, William Lombardi, he preserved the bishop pair with bishop to e7. Queen h5, g6, queen h6, bishop f8, queen h4. Bishop comes to the long diagonal. And knight to f3. And here, Grandmaster Lombardi plays a move that I would never consider. It's a super deep positional move. But it's backed up with solid calculation. He plays the excellent f6. 
I would never have played a move like that. It just would never have occurred to me. What is Grandmaster Lombardi's rationale? Well, he writes that White has relied on his control of the dart squares to maintain his initiative. But this control was illusory because now Black has time to consolidate his advantage. We can see that the move does take away the dark squares from the knights. I would simply be worried about, well, what happens if if white takes my pawn here on f6? Well, what happens if white does take the pawn? Let's check it out. Knight takes, we have bishop takes, queen takes, rook comes to the f file, ice maiden is forced to move, and rook takes on f3. Now this rook cannot be touched. If the pawn takes, queen will recapture, and mate will be waiting here on h1. A super deep positional move, f6, backed up by solid calculation. It's just amazing chess, it really is. Well, white played bishop to h6. We have double zeros, takes, takes. Rook to f1 and e5. And this is to secure the f4 point because... William Lombardi writes that if black cavalry gets to f4, the white position will become untenable. His opening strategy has left him with too passive a position and there is really little for him to do here. He tried b4, which is a good move under the circumstances. It came to the half-open d-file. Takes, takes. To be one, the bishop gets out of the gaze of the rook. Queen to g3. And this move sets a very cunning trap for white. Sorry, for black. <clears throat> There's a pawn here on pre. Would you, my chess friends, be tempted to take this pawn? Well, I would take it in a minute. Um... However, Grandmaster Lombardi gives the following variation. Well, Rook takes on d3. Knight takes, hitting the Rook and the Queen. Rook takes a Queen. Knight takes a Queen. Rook drops back here to g4, hitting the Knight. The Knight comes to d6. Takes. Rook comes to the 7th, hitting the King and the knight has got to move. Takes. Bishop takes. And now this amazing move here for white. H3. The bishop takes. King will probably come here. H2. And these rooks are now super active along the 7th. And William Lombardi writes with excellent play for white. It's just amazing that William Lombardi recognised in this his, his ability to calculate and evaluate. It's, it's just astonishing, really. And instead of, of, of grabbing this pawn here, well, plays the excellent knight to e6 recognising that to do so simply gives white too much counterplay. Knight takes f6 is a desperado move. White is essentially lost and it's just simply a matter of time. Rook takes knight e5, queen dodges, knight g4, Rook f5, queen h4, double rooks on the f-file, queen h6, check, 
King G8, Rook E3. And this is a terrible move <laughs> by White. I'm sorry to say. I wonder if you can work out why, my friends. Well, quite simply put, it blocks the retreat of the Queen. He's covered. And all it takes is for a Rook to come here to the H-file. And the Queen is gone. And White has found a way to trap his own Queen. Well, this is what happens. Takes, takes. And after this, White in fact resigned. A truly amazing game from Grandmaster William Lombardi. I love this move, F6. I mean, a super deep positional move. Backed up by solid calculation. Taking away the dark squares from the knight. Negating the white initiative at the same time. And also the idea after queen g3 not to take the pawn here. Because it would give white uh, too much active counterplay. These are all amazingly... Uh, Amazing deep uh, chess concepts that we should try and get a handle on if, if we are to try and progress. And I think reviewing games like this can uh, seriously help us do that, make uh, good evaluations of chess positions. Anyhow, I am so thankful to my friend from Texas there in Big Spring for sending me these publications. They are truly phenomenal, uh, with beautiful articles, uh, beautiful illustrations, and I sincerely thank him for doing so. Anyhow, my chess friends, I hope you enjoyed this little game. It's certainly a pleasure to relate it to you, and I sincerely wish you well with your own chess. Take care, and goodbye. <laughs> Okay.